Hi, everyone. Um, before we get started, um, take a moment and um, maybe grab um, two blocks if you have or something that would support you, like two blocks, books, um, Tupperware, lo lots of things around the house you can use. Um, great. Um, we'll be starting in a moment. All right, good evening, everyone. Happy Friday, it's six o'clock. It's time to do some yoga. Uh, my name is Maria and I'll be guiding us through class. Uh, so let's get started supine, lying on our backs and Supta Baddha Konasana. So as you lie down on your back, you'll bring the soles of your feet together and then open your knees wide. But we'll do it a little bit differently today and we'll place um, a block, a bolster, a blanket underneath um, our shoulder blades. And Literally, your shoulder blades will sit nice and flat on them right here. I like to use a gorgeous ball. I have one, fortunate enough to have one. Um, and yeah, just find that little sweet spot. And if you get on it, on, the, on a ball, on a bolster, and you find that this is too much for your low back, take it out. Um, and just goal post your arms as you lie flat. And it may take you a moment just to find that sweet spot. And once you're there, take a big breath in through your nose and exhale out. Another one, inhale and exhale. Breath in and breath out. Now if you want, you can also place a block underneath your head as well so that your chest is lifted as well as your head if it's a lot on um, your upper back. But just stay here and breathe and start to feel just a nice rhythm as you land on your mat on this Friday evening. And when you're ready, start to cultivate your ujjayi breath. So seal your lips and breathe in and out through your nose. And as you breathe in and out through your nose, just find a little bit of texture there. So use this breath throughout class, especially when you find that you're stuck. Now from here, we'll start to get a little bit more active. So press the soles of your feet together and then tuck your tailbone. So draw your belly button into your spine and just see how that activates the lower half of your body. The upper half of your body will shift a little bit, and that's okay. And now soften, release that, just hang out. Now draw your belly button into your spine Press your feet together, feel your inner thighs activate. Hold it there and breathe. And then soften back down. All right, so one more time, press the soles of your feet, slightly tuck your tail, draw your belly button in. Now last, press the, your forearms into your mat, into the floor. And then soften. Good. Now slowly bring the soles of your feet onto your mat and then roll onto one side. Remove your block or blanket, whatever you have, and come back to Supta Baddha Konasana with your bowl post arms. And just feel your shoulder blades flat on your mat. Good. 
All right, now bring the soles of your feet onto your mat, knees in towards your chest, and then just rock left and right. And just feel your low back flat on your mat. You can use your hands behind your knees if you'd like. And then take little circles if that feels good. And take those circles the other way. And then I'll start to rock forward and back. And as you rock forward and back, slowly come onto your knees. So stand tall on your knees, on your mat. I'm gonna turn around and my blocks on this side. Take one block and take it between your thighs. I like the skinniest setting for this. So as you squeeze your block, you're gonna squeeze it in, right? So both thighs are squeezing in towards the center of your block. I'm gonna place your thumbs at your heart, palms together. You can press the tops of your feet into your mat, or if you wanna be with your toes tucked, you can do that too. All right, draw your belly button in nice and flat. Continue to breathe nice and evenly. Engage through your glutes, squeeze that block, lean back. So you've got nice length on the front of your body. Your quads are nice and strong, so are your hamstrings. Just feel that. Go as far as you want, like it's enough for you to feel a sensation, but not so much that it's overwhelming and you're stuck in this hyperbolic. And then inhale, rise, and exhale, have a seat. Hands on your thighs. Just take a moment to observe. Nice steady breath here. All right, let's take that two more times. Inhale, rise, stand up on your knees. Again, toes can be tucked or untucked. Press the tops of your feet or the base of your toes into your mat. Connect your palms, thumbs at your heart. Now lean back, squeeze that block. Lean back and breathe. All right, inhale, rise. And exhale, have a seat. All right, one last time. Rise up onto your knees, hands at your heart, squeeze your block, ignite through your core all the way around, lean back. Good, nice and strong, especially with your breath. This is your breath that gets you out of your poses. All right, inhale, rise. As you exhale, come to tabletop. Keep your block in between your thighs. Continue to squeeze your block and inhale, cow pose. Drop your belly, lift your heart. Turn your elbow creases forward. Spread your fingers wide. Breath in and exhale, cat pose. Round and curl, push your mat away. Continue to squeeze your block. And inhale, cow pose. And exhale, cat. Inhale, cap. And exhale, cap. Good. One more. Inhale, cap. And exhale, cap. And inhale, come to a neutral tabletop. You can take the block out. And then as you exhale, find downward facing dog. Lift your hips up and back. Form an inverted V shape with your body. And take a few breaths here just to settle into being upside down. Now that might mean for you to move around, it might mean to stay still. Just find yourself in a position of comfort within discomfort. So push into your mat with your finger pads. As you find a still downward facing dog, have a gaze at your heels, make sure that they're behind your toes. Your knees can be bent or straight. And then send your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Push with your hands. And then see if you can wrap your um, armpits a little bit closer towards each other. And I inhale, look forward. Exhale, right doll. Walk your toes towards your wrists. Let your head hang heavy. And you can reach for opposite elbows. You can stay still. Or you can sway side to side. You can bend your knees. Just feel that nice length in your spine.
All right, and gently release your hands down onto the ground or your blocks, okay? And then place your feet hip width distance apart. Your toes can be together or, um, with a little bit of space between your heels or hip width distance. You choose whatever works best for you. All right, inhale, slowly rise to Tadasana. You can roll up or come up with a flat spine. You can always bend your knees. And in Tadasana, start to firm up. Push into the ground, feel your thighs firm. Draw your belly button into your spine and open up through your collarbones. We're working a lot of back bends today, so we want to make sure that we're nice and flat with our shoulder blades when our arms are down by our side. Shoulder blades flat against your ribs. All right, let's start to move a little bit more. Inhale, arms up overhead. When you reach up, notice if your shoulders get closer to your ears. See if you can lengthen out through your neck. Take a breath in. As you exhale, forward fold. Hinge from your hips. Send your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Let your head hang when you get to the bottom. Inhale, halfway lift. Tabletop your back. Open up through your collarbones. Your hands can be on your thighs or on your shins. And then your knees can always be bent. And then just shift forward so that your hips are over your ankles. Inhale here, and exhale, plant your palms, step your left foot to the back of your mat. Lower your left knee down, inhale, low lunge. So in your low lunge, you can have your back toes tucked or untucked. You choose whatever variation works best. I like it, it supports my knee a little bit more. And then once you're stable on the ground, squeeze your inner thighs together and engage through your left leg. Breath in and exhale, downward facing dog. Plant your palms, step back. Inhale, plank, shift forward, stack your shoulders over your wrists. Resist the ground, spread your fingers wide and then cat in your upper back. Inhale. And exhale, lower all the way down to your belly. You can go knees, chin, chest, or through plank. You choose whatever works best for you. Bring your arms down by your side. Turn your palms to face down. Inhale, locust pose. Lift your chest, lift your legs, lift your arms. I like my feet wide, but your feet can be together. Take an inhale. And exhale, lower down. Two more. Inhale, locust. Exhale, lower. Inhale, locust. Exhale, downward facing dog. Reposition your hands, come up through tabletop or plank. Make your way, downward facing dog. All right, inhale, look forward. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Right knee down, inhale, low lunge on Janasana. Again, toes can be tucked or untucked. Squeeze your inner thighs together, right glute is nice and firm and strong. And then make sure that your chin is uh, perpendicular to your chest. Yes, yeah, so you want to gaze forward. Lengthen out through the sides of your neck. Good, breath in. Exhale forward, fold, bring your hands down, step forward. Push into the ground with your hands as you step forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise and reach up. Exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway, let's flow it with the breath. Exhale, step your right foot back, right knee down. Inhale, crescent moon. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower all the way down. Three locusts. Inhale, locust. Exhale, tap. Inhale, locust. Exhale, tap. One more. Inhale, locust. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step your right foot forward, left knee down. Inhale, low lunge. Exhale, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Think locusts in your chest, exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, reach up. Exhale, arms by your side. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. 
Exhale, step your left foot back. We'll add on left knee down. Inhale, low lunge. And then exhale, twist to the right. So reach your right fingertips back, left fingertips forward. Good. Remember to squeeze your inner thighs. Maybe you gaze forward. Maybe you gaze to the side. Or maybe you gaze to your back thumb. Yeah, looks good. All right. Inhale, low lunge, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower all the way down. Inhale, locust. Exhale, lower. Inhale, locust. Exhale, lower. One more. Inhale, locust. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, left foot forward, right knee down. Inhale, low lunge. Exhale, twist left. So left fingertips reach back, right fingertips reach forward. Open up through your chest and draw the inner border of your left shoulder blade closer to your spine. Good, inhale, low lunge. Exhale, step forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise and reach up. Exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, right foot back, hands down, right knee down. Inhale, low lunge. Exhale, twist left. Inhale. Crescent moon. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower all the way down. Inhale, locust. Exhale, lower. Inhale, locust. Exhale, lower. Inhale, locust. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, right foot forward, left knee down. Inhale, low lunge. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, low lunge. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, reach. Exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good, downward facing dog. Keep that rhythm of breath that we've just established. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower all the way down. Good, inhale, sphinx pose. So stack your shoulders over your elbows. I like my feet wide in sphinx pose. And toes can be untucked or tucked. But press the tops of your feet down and firm up through your thighs. Yeah, so your thighs firm up. Maybe you feel your kneecaps want to lift up or get lighter. Now with your forearms and your palms, press down. And then pull your chest forward so you can come into a sphinx pose and you can gaze forward. Yeah. All right, take a breath in. And exhale, crocodile, right hand on top. So your hip palms are stacked one on top of each other and your elbows are at three and nine o'clock. Your feet again can be together or they can be wide. From here, you'll bring your forehead to the tops of your palms. Lift your right hand with your forehead and then lift your right elbow up. Lift your left leg up. So a little cross body work. Feel your left glute work. Really squeeze it. Draw your belly in. Take a breath in. And exhale, lower down. All right, two more times. Inhale, lift your right elbow up, right hand up, left leg up. And exhale, lower down. One more. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, lower down. Whew. All right, let's switch sides. So left hand on top, 
back of your left palm is connected to your forehead. So the back of your palm lifts your head up and you press the two into each other. Lift your left elbow up to the ceiling, lift your right leg up. So right leg firm and strong. So continue to squeeze your right glute and breath in and exhale, lower down. Two more. Inhale, lift. Left elbow, right leg. And exhale, lower. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, soften down. Take a moment, let your heels flop out. And just breathe. All right, now slowly come up to tabletop. We'll continue the cross body work in tabletop. All right, so in tabletop, your shoulders are over your wrists, your hips are over your knees. Okay, so now reach your left hand forward, turn your palm to the right. And then reach your right toes back. I like to start with my toes on the ground first, find a little bit of stability. And I like my hand a little bit forward of my shoulder. Personal preference. All right, if you wanna float your toes up, you can. Engage through your right glute, take a breath in. As you exhale, bring your left elbow, right knee towards each other. Inhale, reach out. And exhale, curl it in, three more. Inhale, reach out. And exhale, curl in, two more. Inhale, reach. Exhale, curl in. Inhale, reach. And exhale, curl it in. Inhale, reach out. And exhale, tabletop. Good, let's take a cat cow to reset. So inhale, cow. And exhale, cow. And come back to a neutral tabletop. Reach your right arm forward, turn your palm to the left. And then left toes reach back. So you can start with your toes on the ground or lift it. And then from here, take an inhale here, use your left glute. As you exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, reach, and exhale, curl it in. Three more. Inhale, reach out, exhale, curl it in. Two more. Inhale, reach out, and exhale, curl it in. Last one. Inhale, reach out, and exhale, curl it in. Inhale, reach, and exhale, tabletop. And inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. Inhale, come to a neutral tabletop. And then exhale into child's pose. So in child's pose, your forehead stays on the ground or you can put it on a block. Your arms can always be by your side as well. They don't have to be forward. Most people call this one embryo pose. And just take a moment to Establish your breath. So if you've lost it, this is the time to get it. It's a nice restful pose to do this. And then we'll move on. All right, when you're ready, make your way downward facing dog. Or if you want to stay in child's pose, you are always welcome to stay there as well. All right, from downward facing dog, take a giant breath in through your nose. And exhale out. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Spin your back heel down to about a 45 degree angle. And inhale, warrior one, reach forward and then reach up. Stack your shoulders over your hips. So warrior one, you want your front toes to point at 12 o'clock. And then your back toes can point anywhere from nine to 12 o'clock, depending on how your hips are built, yeah? And you'll notice right away that your hips are probably not square to the front of the room, and that's okay. But we'll work on strengthening the hip joint to help that hip move forward, even just a millimeter. So feel the, back, the pressure of your back foot. Do you have equal pressure in the base of your toes and your heels? Find that, then press down into your mat. Squeeze through your left glute. Feel your left hip want to move forward. Breath in. 
And then exhale, open twist right. So reach your right fingertips back, left fingertips reach forward. So this is a really nice deep twist. If this hurts your low back, lift your back heel up and just do a high lunge with a twist. But if it supports it, go for it. You'll notice it's not as deep of a twist with the foot on the ground. All right, inhale, warrior one. And then exhale, airplane, Takasana. Bring your arms down by your side. Lean forward, push into the ground with your right foot, lift your left foot up. Airplanes, just so similar to warrior three, and your arms are down by your side. And maybe you're a little bit wobbly like I am. All good. I'll just use the wall here to hold me up for a little bit. But think locust. So this is locust with a leg on the ground. Everything else is the same. Just feel that. Good, take a breath in, Woo! and exhale. Slowly lower your left foot down, and inhale, Tadasana, slowly rise up. Good, just take a moment and recoup that. That pose takes a lot out of the outer right hip. The whole right leg is used up a lot. All right, inhale, chair pose, bend your knees. Sit low, keep your chest up, gaze forward. With your feet, if your feet are um, hip width distance apart, this feels really good, really good in an activated sort of way. So press your feet down and try to pull them apart. Feel your outer hips fire up. Yeah, good. Take a breath in and exhale, pyramid with your left foot back. So our right foot is still forward. I'm going to grab my block, my blocks. Yeah, I do. I'm muted. There you go. Okay, now we're fixed. All right. So from pyramid, find that length through your spine, and then send your right sits bones towards your right heel. Feel that sensation. All right, so your left hand will stay where it is. Inhale, revolved triangle. Reach your right arm up towards the ceiling. Good. Gaze up at your thumb or to the right, whatever feels great on your neck. Just stay and breathe in this pose. All right, now start to bend it to your front knee, your right knee. Walk your left hand a little bit forward. I'm taking my block with me. And inhale, revolve half moon. Push into the ground with your left hand. Yeah, and then use your left glute to lift up really high. Good. Continue to breathe. Push into the ground with that left hand. Take a breath in and exhale forward, fold. Good job. All right, inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, frog squat, malasana. Take your feet nice and wide. Sit into your hips. And then once you're here, you know, just take a block underneath your seat if you want that support. Think long spine. Open up through your collarbones, hands at your heart. Now, if you have your knees, uh, your elbows on the insides of your knees, if you have them there, give them a squeeze. Yeah, so squeeze in with your knees, with your elbows push out. Good. All right, take an inhale. And as you exhale, slowly lower yourself down. Use your hands if you need to. And come into cow face legs with your left leg on the bottom. So cow face legs, your knees aim to stack one on top of each other. They may or may not. Mine certainly don't. And then I've got one foot that's out here and another one that's tucked right in. So this is the imbalances that we have in our lives. And we just, you know, we work with it, right? All right, so sit nice and tall. Feel your sits bones grounded into the earth. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Interlace your fingers. Now take your, finger, your interlaced fingers underneath your left knee. Pull your knee in towards your chest. And then as you pull your knee in towards your chest, press back down. So your knee wants to go down, but your hands stop. Yeah. So both biceps are nice and strong. All 
All right, now gently soften and release that. Now from here, we're going to come into this pose in the other way. If you wanna have some fun and be silly with me, you are totally welcome to. If not, just switch your legs if you're not into it. All right, so lean forward until your hands are on the ground. Now from here, lift your hips up. So my legs are crossed and our, my hands are gonna walk, my feet pivot. So hands walk to the right, hands walk to the right, feet just pivot. Keep walking hands around to the right until you come full circle, bend your knees, have a seat. And now you're in cow face legs, go Mukhasana on the other side with your right leg on top. So take a moment just to observe your right outer hip here. Yeah, feels nice and lengthened, right? <laughs> Um, now, interlace your fingers, take your hands underneath your right knee, pull your knee in towards your chest, but your leg wants to, your knee wants to push back down. Okay, take a breath in. And then as you exhale, gently release. Now lean back and bring both legs out long in front of you and just give them a good shake. Now let's do all that on the other side. All right, you ready? Let's make your way into downward facing dog, okay? And here we go. So downward facing dog. Find that rhythm of breath, let it release to you. And inhale, look forward. And exhale, step your left foot forward. Right heel down. Inhale, warrior one, reach up. Good. All right, so warrior one. Lots of things can happen with the, with the feet in warrior one. You do not need to have a heel-to-heel -heel alignment. You hear that a lot. Um, take your feet wide. If that feels more comfortable on your hips, just take them wide. It's all good. It's still a beautiful pose. And then feel the pressure on your feet, like we did on your back foot, like we did on the other side, yeah? Find that even sensation engaged through your right glute. Now, your hip points, you know this bony part that you have right here on your hips? See if you can, if that can lift up, draw your belly button in as you reach up and lengthen out through your neck. Good, yeah. All right, breath in. And then as you exhale, twist to the left, reach your left fingertips back. And then notice, is this twist deeper on this side or is it not? Mine's lighter on this side. You just don't have as deep of a twist. And then you can always bring your back hand to your low back if that feels better, if you choose. And you can always lift your back heel up if this is really not great on your low back. Lift your back heel up. Hmm. All right, inhale, warrior one. And exhale, airplane, the kasana. Bring your arms down by your side, open up through your chest. Lean forward, lean forward, back foot floats up. Keep your chest up. See if you can get the inner seam of your right thigh closer to the ceiling. You'll feel your right hip move down. Good, think locust, okay? Continue to breathe. Use furniture for balance if you need to. And then inhale, slowly rise, Tadasana. Good, bring your right foot to your left. Take a moment and just observe. All right, inhale, chair pose. Bend your knees, reach your arms up by your ears. Keep your chest up. Press your feet down, pull them apart. Let your outer hips do some work here. Good, inhale. And then exhale, pyramid with your right foot back, left foot forward. Okay, hands can be on the ground or your two blocks. Mine are a little too far away from me right now, but that's okay. But just focus your attention to your shoulder blades and where they are. So with your arms and when with your wrists directly below your shoulders, you have the ability to draw the inner border of your shoulder blades towards each other and down your back. Squeeze your inner thighs. Good. All right, so your right hand stays where it is. Inhale, revolve, triangle, reach your left arm up. Continue to squeeze your inner thighs together, reach your left fingertips to the ceiling, and then your spine is nice and long. And a block underneath your right hand does really great marvels for this pose. All right, so we're gonna tack onto this and you can stay or join in a balance. Bend into your left knee, walk your right hand forward, 
push into the ground, lean into your right hand, revolved half moon. Yeah, so that back foot just floats up. That sensation of floating is difficult to achieve sometimes. Use your right glute to lift your right heel up. And take a breath in. And then as you exhale, fold forward. Good, inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, frog squat, malasana. So bend it to your knees. Again, you can take a block underneath your sits bones if that feels really nice. And just take a moment. All right, breath in. And as you exhale, slowly lower your butt down. All right, um, we'll take some more outer hip openers uh, the, before we get into the back bends, as that's always really nice. I'm just gonna change the angle of this camera right here. Good. All right, so double pigeon, we'll start with the right leg on the bottom. So your shin is somewhat parallel to the edge of your mat. And then take your left ankle and place it on top of your right knee. It can be a little bit past, for example, like this, where your thighs are a little bit closer together, or it can be directly on top. And if you're like me and you've got a lot of space and you wanna support that space, you can always, 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 you can always take a block in between here. So as you sit up nice and tall, just feel your sits bones grounded. All right, take a breath in. And then as you exhale, slowly lower yourself down. And what I like is a block right underneath my forehead. And inhale slowly, sit up. If you have a block, just move it off to the side just for a second. And then bring the soles of your feet onto your mat. Yeah, nice and wide. And then uh, from here, drop your knees over to the left. Take a nice little twist, take your right hand, reach around, pull your chest in the direction that your fingertips are pointing. Inhale, come back to center, and let's take it to the other side. So your knees come over to the right. You want a 90 degree bend in both knees, and then twist over to the right. And if it feels good to come down onto your forearms to get a deeper twist, you can do that too. And then inhale, slowly come back. Let's take that on the other side. So now we'll take the left leg on the bottom for double pigeon or fire log. And then the right ankle comes on top. And again, you can be a little bit closer together, um, thighs closer together like this, or right on top. Again, if you want that support, that works great too. All right, when you're ready, sit up nice and tall, feel your sits bones grounded, core strong, and now slowly roll over. And if you want that block underneath your forehead, go ahead and take that block. All right, and slowly rise up. Perfect. So let's move into some nice back bends. So we've got the outer hips ready because those need to be nice and fired up. Shoulders are nice and ready. We've been moving them around quite a bit. And if you've been practicing with me, I've been working a lot of lat strength the last couple of months, um, which is really nice uh, to have really strong lats in your back to support your back bends. Um, all right, let's get started. So we're gonna do three different variations of camel. Um, two blocks work great. Blocks are always optional. If you don't have blocks or don't want to use them, I leave it up to you. All right. So come to stand on your knees like we did earlier. We'll take a block between our thighs. And we'll start 
right here. So we'll take traditional camel. Hands on your low back, onto your butt, okay? Now this block, like we did earlier, we squeezed it in, yeah? But now we're gonna do not only squeeze it in, we're also gonna see if we can bring that block forward. So our thighs literally are gonna rotate outward, okay? So hands on your low back, open up through your collarbones, squeeze your elbows towards each other, squeeze your block. Now see if you can move that block forward, really squeeze your glutes. And you can feel right away your candle just starts to build on its own once you've started that. All right, lift your chest up and come into your camel. If you wanna reach for your heels, go for it. Try to do both hands at the same time. Sometimes back bends and twists don't work. And just remember to breathe in this pose. Short sips of air, we'll do it every single time. Find the ability to be unstuck. And then inhale, rise. And exhale, have a seat. So you can remove the block, but we're gonna use it again if you wanna keep it there, you choose. All right, come to stand on your knees again. Take the second block in between your heels. So medium height works great. So you're gonna squeeze that uh, block with your heels. This block, same thing, you're gonna squeeze in and you're gonna push that block forward. But this time we'll take it with our hands at our heart. All right, squeeze the block, squeeze your glutes, drive that block forward. Lift your heart up towards your thumbs, squeeze your shoulder blades together down your back. Go as far as you wanna go. And I encourage you to hold your head up instead of letting it hang. It just builds muscles in your neck. All right, inhale, rise, and exhale, have a seat. Let's take a moment to observe. All right, so remove the block that's in between your heels. Keep the block that's in between your thighs if you have it there. Now, like we did earlier, we're gonna lean back. But before we lean back, let's position our arms. So when we, you know, we're standing on our knees, arms by our side, our palms are on our thighs, um, and they're nice and flat. Now, if you turn your palms, what happens? Yeah, your chest tends to come out. You kind of come into this kind of situation. See if you can stand up nice and tall at the same time. Really press the backs of your palms towards your thighs. Kind of difficult, not gonna lie. All right, so from here, press the backs of your palms towards your thighs without changing the orientation of your shoulders and then lean back. Good. Now, as you lean back, build your camel. Good. Now your backs of your palms are aiming for each other. Now maybe, maybe you grab your heels, maybe you don't. All good. I like to push, yeah. All right, continue to squeeze that block, squeeze your glutes, lift your heart up. And as difficult as it can be, just breathe, short sips. All right, inhale, rise. And exhale, have a seat. Hmm. Notice the difference in your heart rate compared to your breath. Your heart rate might be a little bit faster than your breath normally is when your heart rate is that fast. So just observe little nuances in our bodies. All right, now make your way down onto one hip, okay? And then lie down on your back again. Whew. All right. Soles of your feet on your mat and take your feet nice and wide. Then goal post your arms. Lower your knees over to the left. And if you wanna take your left foot on top of your right knee, go ahead and take that. And then allow your right hip to move if it wants to lift up off your mat. Don't force it down, just let it move in the direction it wants to move. Okay. 
Okay, slowly unravel, unwind, take that same pose, other side. So your knees fall over to the right. You might have to move your hips a little bit, all good to the left. And then your right foot can, can, can come on top of your left knee if you want it. And then let, let your left hip move freely. Now bring the soles of your feet back onto your mat and then place your feet hip width distance apart. Now if you have the option here, we're going to take three different bridge variations. And I like to use um, a block sometimes. So I'm going to take a block in between my thighs. You choose if you want to have it. It just holds me accountable to the inner thighs. The inner thighs or the adductors um, are the weakest muscle in, in, in the body. Doesn't matter who you are, even if you're a bodybuilder, your adductors are always gonna be weaker. So any opportunity that you get to work on your adductors, your inner thighs, you might as well take it, right? All right, so place your arms down by your side. Now, um, with your hands, place them as if you're gonna karate chop your mat. So the pinkies are flat, and now press your outer wrists down. Inhale, okay, uh, bridge pose, lift your hips up. Squeeze your block. And let's start with your feet. Notice the pressure in your feet. Do you have the same amount of pressure in the base of your toes and your heels? And then adjust. Not, you need to lower down, adjust your feet. Now press your outer wrist, see if you can lift your chest up even higher, and then draw your chin away. Good, take an inhale. As you exhale, slowly lower your hips down, remove your block, and take fallen bridge or broken bridge. So feet wide, knock your knees together. Goal post your arms. All right, so come back to your feet um, underneath uh, your knees. All right, arms by your side. This time, have your elbows bent. And we're really going to push through the backs of our arms or triceps. All right. If you want that block between your thighs, you can always take that. All right. Inhale. Bridge pose. Push with your backs of your arms. Really, really push, 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 push. Yeah. Squeeze your glutes. Just breathe. All right. Stay in this pose, even as shaky as you are. Okay, take a breath in. As you exhale, lower your hips down. Yogi's choice. You can take a broken bridge or fallen bridge like we did earlier, or come to Sujabhata Konasana, goal post your arms. You choose. All right, our last back bend of class. Don't miss it. <laughs> it's one of my favorite ones. It used to be like my worst one, but now I love it. Um, take a block, all right, and we'll come into a supported bridge pose. So you'll take that block just at your sits, um, at, um, at your tailbone, your sacrum. So you want to find that sweet spot. It might take you a little bit. I like the lowest setting, completely up to you. Now, with my arms, I'm going to take them a little bit wider than I normally do. And then you can stay with your feet as they are, or you can lengthen out your right leg and then lengthen out your left leg. And just literally, I call this dump asana because it's just a dump pose. You're just leaning into it. And just take a moment just to feel. If your legs are long, you'll probably notice that this is all nice and long. Yeah, we've been working that. There are hip flexors quite a bit.
And slowly bring your feet back underneath your knees. And then lift your hips up and slide that block nice and slowly out of the way. And just do, we'll do a little check here, okay? So come into Supta Baddha Konasana, uh, soles of your feet touch, knees wide. Goal post your arms. And just take a moment to see how does this pose feel like it did at the beginning of class. All right, now start to draw your knees towards your chest. Flatten out your lumbar curve, okay? So your lumbar curve is completely flat, that, you know, that little curve that you have just above your butt. All right, from here, come into happy baby. So you can grab behind your knees, you can grab your calves or your ankles, you can grab your feet, you can grab these fingers, a big toe, you choose, and then rock side to side. And then when you're ready, take a breath in through your nose, and exhale. Another one, inhale. Breath in. All right, good job. Give your knees a good little hug. Draw them in towards your chest and take your knees wide. Yeah, so as you draw them in towards your chest, you're actually trying to pull them towards your armpits. Yeah, full when we're moving pose. And then just notice, are you crooked? I'm crooked. Um, it's something with my spine, it's just the way I'm built. But yeah, it's just little things I like to notice in my own body. I hope you enjoy learning things about your own body and how it moves. All right, take a breath in. And then as you exhale, come into an easy twist. So move your hips over to the right of your mat, lower your knees over to the left, goal post your arms or send them out left and right. Now with your left foot, the foot that's on the bottom, hook it behind your right. And as you hook it behind your right, you'll get a little bit more length just right in this area up here, maybe even into, into your outer hip area. And then just notice if your right shoulder has lifted up off your mat, it's probably gonna be lighter than your left, just all good, just notice. All right, slowly unravel, unwind. Pull your knees into your chest and then just rock left and right. And then come into easy twists on the other side. So your hips will move over to the left. Your knees will fall over to the right. And again, arms can be left and right or goal posts. And then take your right foot, the foot that's on the bottom, hook it behind your left and see how it pulls your hip in the direction of the bottom of your mat. All right, inhale, slowly come to center. Hug your knees in, rock left and right. Good, and now from here, hug yourself up nice and tight. Hug yourself up nice and tight. Give yourself a really, really good squeeze. And take a big breath in through your nose. And exhale, corpse pose, Shavasana. Send yourself out nice and long on your mat. You finally made it to the best and hardest pose of class. Now in your Shavasana, you have lots of options. If you want to use any of your blocks underneath your heart, or if you want to come into that supported bridge pose, you can do that too. If you're choosing not to use any props, totally cool. I highlight the placement of your shoulder blades on your mat. So for me right now, I need to tuck them in so I can get them nice and flat. I'll bring you back when it's time. Let go of your breath. Let your monkey mind go and take a moment to observe what's in your body if your monkey brain is taking over. 
I'll bring you back when it's time. Take a breath in through your nose and exhale out. Take a moment to observe. What it is that you feel in your body right now before you begin to move? What is it that you feel in your heart before you move? And the thoughts that run through your mind before you move. Start to find little wiggles and little rolls in your body. Start to find soft and gentle movement. And then reach your arms up overhead. Start to bend into your knees and then roll onto whatever side. In this position of rebirth, Take a moment to just take that out into the world. Where did you become unstuck today? As you move through all the postures and you reminisce on class, where were you stuck and where did you get unstuck and how did you do it? Take that forward with you. All right, slowly rise and find a comfortable seat. As you find that comfortable seat, bring your palms together with your thumbs at your heart and bow your chin, soften your gaze or close your eyes and breathe in. Breathe out. And inhale your thumbs to your third eye. As you exhale, bow forward. Namaste, yogis. Have a beautiful Friday, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Enjoy the nice long weekends. Weather is fantastic. Be nice and safe with your families. Namaste, everyone. <laughs>